Welcome to Late to the Game. Yes, welcome. I'm Carl. I'm Chris Ham. Okay, so, so Carl's going to tell a story. Yeah, we were in the break here. We were talking, and he's like, is this show worthy? And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> so, okay, uh, going back to Miss Texas, um, the atmosphere is so awesome. And pre-show, everybody gets on stage, and they take pictures, and it's just kind of like a pre-show, like get hyped kind of thing. Oh, my God, I'm all the way back here. Sorry, continue. Okay. Um, so anyway, on stage, I had uh, um, one of the, the people on stage yell down to me and, and request that I play certain music because we have house music that's assigned and it's clean and everything's good. So she yells down to me, hey, will you play some LMFAO? And I'm like, okay, yeah. And I'm not too familiar with LMFAO. So I just went to Apple Music and then I found like the top like 10 songs that everybody loves and I downloaded them all and started playing them one after the other. Yeah. Meanwhile, house is open. So, or actually, no, 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 house <gasps> hasn't opened yet. This is pre house opening, which means that the house opens and people come to their seats for, you know, until the show starts. Right, right, right. So the house isn't open, but the lobby is full of fucking people. They're everywhere in the they're, lobby. They're all waiting to get, uh -huh. to and come inside. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, she asked me to play LMFO. I create this playlist and I start playing it. And all of a sudden, Shots comes on featuring Lil Wayne. And that thing is riddled with fucks and suck my dicks and all sorts of shit like that. And so, like, they're all jamming it on stage. I'm jamming it down there until I hear fuck at least 10 times. I'm like, I can't be playing this. <laughs> so I fade it out and start the next song. And then come to find out later that that was being live fed to the lobby. So all these families with their kids and shit are listening to the shot song by LMFAO talking about getting fucked up and sucking play, dicks. Play the very beginning of that song. Oh my god. Like, I so there's a house full of people. There's a lobby full of a people. A lobby full of people. And waiting to watch here. the Miss Texas. All right, hang on, hang on. It was so bad. <laughs> That's awesome. But it was one of those, like, at the time, it wasn't bad because I didn't know the, like, right. <laughs> the, the entirety of the situation. But later when they said that that was being live fed, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> well, I mean... She asked you to play it. Yeah, but I also, <laughs> and for me not knowing, you know, what song it was after right. the after the first couple words, I should have cut it. But me, I was like, nah, I'm gonna let it ride. It's not like anybody outside of this room is hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> let, let alone that they are. <laughs> Little did you know. <laughs> Oh, I just watched Stranger Things uh, the other night, and little did he know. I think that would be... What? Remember Dustin Hoffman? He's like, oh, little did he know. No, that's uh, Stranger Than the Fiction. Fiction. Yeah. Not Stranger I was like, Things. oh my god, are we going to talk about Stranger Things? Because I'm all we, about we, that. We can. Did you finish it? Oh, god, yeah. I, I binged it in one fucking oh night. I went so to bed good. at like 8 o'clock in the morning. But you see, like, the, the, you see Uma Thurman in Robin, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot that we talked about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's very pretty. Mm -hmm. But yeah, after you said that, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, that, that, that absolutely is what their kid should look like. <laughs> it should look like. Anyway, uh, yeah, Stranger Things, holy fuck, dude. dude. Okay, so, a couple of things about it. Um, God, there's a lot I could actually talk about. I, I really, really, really liked this last season. I liked I it better too. than season two. I did too. Um, I thought season two was fucking phenomenal, don't get me wrong. Uh, hang on. Okay. It said... It, it no, no, no. I need you to look at the screen. Help me out here. I don't think I can make this jump. Do I fall off? Do I need... Oh, I can. Okay, never mind. Cool. Okay. We're good. Um, the season two laid a lot of the, uh, the character, um, interaction groundwork for season three. That's true. Yeah. Uh, with, like, Max and, uh, and Eleven and, and Mike and Eleven being, like, a thing. And yeah, Steve yeah. and, um... And Dustin. Dustin. Dustin? Yeah, continuing there. there. <laughs> and Steve Harrington. 
How many kids are you friends with? God damn, I love Steve Harrington <laughs> so did you much. See, did you see the meme? It's got a picture of um, uh, Will's brother. I can't remember his name. The fucking Leonardo DiCaprio, River Phoenix looking motherfucker. And oh, Edward yeah, yeah, Furlong. Yeah. He looks like Edward Furlong, River Jesus Phoenix. Christ. Anyway, him, it, it, it's a meme, and it's got a picture of him, and it says, uh, he'll steal, or Mr. Girlfriend Stealer. Right. And then it's got um, Max's older brother, and it's uh, Mr. Wife Stealer. Yeah. And, and then it's got uh, Steve. It's like Mr. 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 Steal Your Kids. Kid, yeah. yeah. And then it's got the Russian dude, Alexi, and it's like, Mr. Mr. Steal Your Heart. heart. Oh, yeah. Alexi. God damn it. They barely, oh, God. That show's so good. Like, they didn't have a whole lot of time to really, like, make you like Alexi. And it it took one scene at him at a carnival Uh that you were just, like, fucking heartbroken. Oh, man. That scene, though, with, um, I I don't, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this, but just the, um, the cinematography of that show is fucking incredible. And that, uh, that scene between Hopper and the Russian dude in the, like, Funhouse mirrors area, uh-huh. that was fucking cool. Yeah, like that looked so fucking cool. Um, I'm getting chills. Yeah, like, just like reminiscing. Not, yeah, it's so fucking good. It is. Anybody's- I still think that the first season is the best because the first season um, relies a lot on the mystery of it all, and the mystery is still intriguing even after you know. Yeah, like I. I literally finished the third season and just hit replay and like fell asleep watching the first season because I was just like, "Fuck, this show's so fucking good. I'm just gonna watch it over again." Um, and I'm I watched like another two episodes of the first season. I was like, "God damn!" Like, L- let us know in the comment section if you immediately started because I I too did the same thing. Yeah. I went as soon as it was over. I was like, "I'm going back to one." Fuck right. This. Yeah. Like, it's so good. Um, and I think it's um. I think it especially resonates with. It, it, this is gonna sound weird, but like, god damn it! It's okay. It's the second time I've done that. At the same spot. Uh, close enough. Um, I think it uh, especially resonates with people our age and a little bit older that also like. This is gonna sound shitty, but like that grew up in small town America. Um, just like the whole like you know, riding your bikes to the other side of town to go hang out with your friends and, like, cell phones didn't exist and hanging out at the mall. And, like, that's all stuff that we did. Like, I know that that's, like, that's an 80s show and we were very, very young in the 80s. Like, we were little babies in the 80s. But it was the same thing for fucking 90s kids. Yeah, Yeah, carried over. We fucking rode our bikes to the, you know, Tin Top video and rented Super Nintendo games and... Like, it, it, it has that same, like, nostalgic feeling of, like, this could literally have been me and my friends. Yeah. We were like this. Agreed. I feel like that's a, a spot-on um, valid opinion of the right. feel of the show. So I, I feel like it helps super extra resonate with uh, those of us that kind of grew up in that lifestyle in that situation of just like I wonder what the small town fucking kids I, I wonder how it resonates with uh, kids that are post like cell phone right know? like I don't I don't know I don't think it does resonate I think that it's like it's like when we watch movies from like the 60s or 70s and like oh that's weird quaint yeah yeah, yeah that's trippy man we're getting old fucking fuck man yeah, no kidding <laughs> Um, but like, yeah, like I went to our town's like, we went to our town's like little festival thing and, you know, it wasn't nearly as cool as that was, but. Don't get the candles, man. Fuck those candles. You're right. Okay. (laughs) Just, you're, you you know what? Ah, ah. Okay. (laughs) Nice. Good job. Those candles were a trap, dude. They were. They were like, yeah, you want this, don't you? It's like, don't go for that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I really, honestly, I've been so enthralled with our conversations. And, like, I haven't really been paying attention to most of this gameplay. Okay, I had made it to here previously. I think I fell off a fucking ledge, like, right up here, so I need to concentrate. <gasps> oh, my God, I almost did it again. Everybody oh. quiet down again. Yeah, shut up. Um... But so, like, what did you think? So, 
here's kind of a weird thing is that a lot of people are like, oh, how, um, are you going to bring up the smoking thing? No, I don't give a fuck about that. Okay, um, that's right. so dumb. It is. Like, literally, seriously, like, there's that happened, and they're like, oh, we should, like, cut down on the smoking. But, like, okay, you also have, like, very clearly, like, anti-Russian, anti-communist oh, yeah. kind of at, overtones at a weird, to at a, it. At a weird time. It, at a weird <laughs> time right now where, like, lots of people are like, yeah, no, socialism, we should probably do that because, like, capitalism is failing. And, and, like, those are, like, thoughts and opinions that, like, people are having right now is, like, literally, like, fuck capitalism. Like, it's garbage. It makes people do terrible things. It makes these companies fucking, you know, oh, skeleton spike. Oh, god damn. Cool. Uh, please. Oh, thank God. I started from up here again. Um, and so, yeah, it's got the, the little girl, Lucas's little sister, being like, I fucking love capitalism and, like, all this stuff. And it's like, is that propaganda or is that just, like, kind of, like, being uh, in sync with the times as they were? Like, the, the, the well, fucking Red Scare and, you well, know. What's scary is that there is those comparison lines to be drawn for today you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. like so it's a little both Fuck but then you but then you watch off. did you watch chernobyl at all no i don't have a hbo okay anything. yeah see and that's that's falling at a weird time too you know the chernobyl thing and then the chernobyl bounce back from russia is like damn it oh no oh i'm all the way back here Fuck. <laughs> yeah. oh man it's okay, Chris Ham, you got this shit. You're in a cave. I'm in the same fucking cave that I've been in the last two episodes. I had to start all over again. <laughs> Fuck, I'm sorry, y'all. You should be. I am. It's okay, we'll make it through. Continue, sorry. Oh man, I just just the Chernobyl, like the Russians are like, no, we're gonna we're gonna redo it and we're gonna tell the truth, and it's like I don't know, man. It seems like you guys are... Uh, okay, so I don't know really anything about it. Like, I know what Chernobyl is, and, like, I guess I kind of know what happened. Like, a reactor fucking melt yeah. had a meltdown, right? Yeah, it okay. blew up. But, yeah, okay, just... so so tell me what the show actually is. First of all, is it a show? Yes, it's a five... Well, it's a five-episode miniseries is what it is. Is it... But Okay, so uh, is it a documentary, or is it, like, an acted-out no, act, show? No, acted-out. Okay, okay. So it's I like, didn't know that. Yeah, it's directed and acted, and basically... It starts with the the reactor blowing up. Okay. And then it's how it's basically how Russia dealt with the situation. Okay. And there was a lot of like upper management lying and like, no, everything's fine, it's all under control, but like come to find out that it's not at all under control. Right. And everybody's at risk, but they don't wanna like they don't wanna tell the people. Yeah, they don't wanna freak everybody out, they don't wanna evacuate, and then finally it comes to that. And then not only that, but like the thing was like the thing was exposed. And there were firefighters, there were fucking hospital people working, like, right. I mean, everybody's getting fucked up by this shit for however long the, the fire lasted, and, uh, it, really, the, the main character is, like, this, uh, um, yes. this scientist guy that, like, knows shit's fucked up, and he's the one that's, he's the only one that's like, no, guys, come on. The shit's fucked up. We gotta fix it. Like, mm -hmm. and so he gets sent with this other dude, and they're basically cleaning up the aftermath of it, and just how they covered up everything and lied about everything. And it's it's really good. It's it's as good as what people are saying it is. If you've heard a lot of, I have. I, yeah, I've heard a lot about it. I've seen some memes and things like that. But I, yeah, I just don't. I don't have HBO, so I haven't been able to watch it's, it. It's depressing. It's heartbreaking. It's fucked up on so many different levels it's it's good storytelling cool i actually did some research uh after i watched the first episode and i learned about the the reactor and there was actually this guy that flew a helicopter they didn't add this in the show but he uh he had his own helicopter and the russians helicopters they're always huge they always make their their yeah they got big their, old helicopters their military equipment just like way huge and bulky and strong looking yeah but the biggest helicopter in the world this dude kept flying loads of sand and dropping it you know just by himself mm-hmm 
to, to try and cover up the core. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <sighs> this episode has uh, been really good. I didn't mean this episode. This <laughs> level is pissing me off. Um, but, I mean, that's Castlevania, right? Yeah. All right. Can we take... Uh, uh, later. later. What? Oh, nothing. That's off-screen shit. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, viewers. Bye! <laughs>